I mean, the way around I look at it is that the universe is there, and in certain small parts of the universe, probably rather rare, um, things arrive, which we call beings and which we call conscious beings, which in which the material of the universe is put together in such a way that a, a, a feature of the universe which is potentially there is somehow realized, but, but normally not. So I'm, I'm more on the side of saying matter is primary, but I don't like to put it that way because matter, in a certain sense, is not the whole of the way physics is described. You say you have, I mean, is, is, is light matter? You don't call light matter normally. F are photons matter? I mean, there are massive particles tend to be referred to as matter. And are they more important primarily than things like gravitational waves or something? I mean, it's not, <laughs> not very clear. The notion of matter is not very well defined in that sense, but it's better defined than, than uh, conscious experience because we don't really know that much about that. We have it, but somehow what makes it, what makes beings like us be conscious is more, I, I do regard it as a question of physics in a sense, because my view is that it depends upon something in physics which we uh, do not understand as yet. Th we do understand the problem, that is to say, it's not something you know, with no connection with the way the physical world operates. In my view, and I'm giving a very specific view of my own here, that current physics has a huge gap in it. And current, the, the huge gap, see people often say, well, quantum mechanics is the best, phys best theory we ever had, and they hesitate to mention that it's actually not such a good theory because it's self-inconsistent. When I say self-inconsistent, I mean, well, say the primary equation of quantum mechanics can be phrased as being the Schrodinger equation. And the Schrodinger equation tells you you've got the state of the system, then the equation tells you how that state evolves in time. The only trouble is it doesn't. It evolves in time for a while until it does what's called somebody makes a measurement. What does that mean? Well, they wheel out of the cupboard some machine which makes a measurement. Well, that machine is made out of the same material as everything else, and so why doesn't that evolve according to the Schrodinger equation? I mean, Schrodinger clearly understood this because of his cat. I mean, people say, oh, well, we could make a Schrodinger's cat if we were clever enough and so on. That wasn't the point of Schrodinger's talking about his cat. The point he was talking about was, look, my equation, when I say my, I mean Schrodinger, Schrodinger's equation, he, his equ he, he was saying, in a sense, my equation doesn't describe the way the world behaves. If you had a cat and tried to do this experiment, you get to this absurdity namely a cat which is dead and alive at the same time. What a load of nonsense. <laughs> a cat wouldn't be dead and alive at the same time. Something goes on in the physical world which isn't, isn't in accordance with the Schrodinger equation. So he was very clear on that point, although many people often misunderstand him, I think. I thought he was very clear on that point. And he and Einstein and even, peop even Dirac, rather surprisingly, uh, were of the view that quantum theory needs uh, some attention. That it's not, well they say it, it, it's not a complete theory. I would say it's even worse than that in a sense. That it's not even a self-consistent theory. Because the theory says a system should evolve unitarily, in other words according to the Schrodinger equation. But the world doesn't behave that way. It suddenly turns itself into probabilities and things. It's not that state, it's the probability of different states. And how on earth does it do that? The Schrodinger question doesn't do that, as Schrodinger well knew. So there's another part of the theory, which is referred to sometimes as the collapse of the wave function, or whatever you say. It means that the quantum state does not describe the way the world behaves. At certain stages in its existence, it turns into a probability of different alternatives. And the puzzle is, why does it do that? When does it do that? What is the theory underlying a generalization of quantum mechanics which contains that collapse process? Now, one of the misleading things in all this 
is the word people use is making an observation. So you make a measurement is not is a little bit less personal. But if you say make a measure an observation, it seems to suggest that there is an observer there. And what is an observer? It seems to suggest something with a conscious be some conscious being perceives it. And so the view was not uncommonly put forward in the early days by people like well Wigner in particular, von Neumann, that somehow um, it was the presence of a conscious being which collapsed the wave function. That it would evolve according to the Schrodinger equation unless somebody came along and looked at it in the sort of broad sense of looked. And that means, and somebody in the broad sense of somebody. Maybe it doesn't have to be a human, but s some conscious being of some sort. Now, I don't like that idea. Well, I not, it's not so much I dislike it. I don't think it can be right. Although I did, I did talk to Wigner about it, actually. And I was quite surprised that he was a little less dogmatic about the own point of view than I was expecting. He was saying, this is an alternative, but maybe that's a different idea. It should be right. But the thing that worries me about it is, well, i just give an example like uh, the weather. You see, the weather is what people call the chaotic system, that it really depends on little things like the butterfly effect. You see, if the butterfly winged it, flapped its wing that way, it would evolve to this weather. Maybe if it flapped it in a different way, it would evolve that way. We'll take that to a little further, and you might say it depends on quantum effects. Yes, I think that's the standard view, which the weather does depend on quantum effects. Now that means that maybe take a planet out there somewhere, which is completely like the Earth, an Earth-like planet, but it has no life in it. And let's suppose, therefore, no conscious entities on it. Well, that's another question, but let's say no con conscious entities on it. Then that means the weather on that planet will be a quantum superposition of all sorts of different weathers. OK, let's suppose it's a few, a few light years away, but not many. A probe has gone out to photograph the weather of that planet. And uh, takes a few photographs of the weather. And these will be quantum superpositions of different weathers. And as it comes back, it sort of sends a signal to the Earth. Look, I've got these photographs. It doesn't say anything because it's a, not got any beings on it, but it's got a photographer. It's got, it's got a camera on it. And this camera sends these photographs back to Earth. And not until somebody sitting in front of a screen getting these signals and suddenly sees the image of that superposed image of the weather, and then it becomes one weather. A load of nonsense, as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that somebody sitting on the Earth looking at a computer screen could somehow suddenly, what does suddenly mean? I mean, the speed of light or what? Creates that the weather on that planet suddenly becomes weather, one weather. I just don't believe it. That's not the way physics operates. So I don't believe that the collapse of the wave function as a feature of a conscious being coming and looking at it.